بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم everybody come on in come on in it's time for another fun and exciting podcast today inshallah and uh, as you know before every podcast we have very important simultaneous sip I know some some of you are listening and traveling you should stop your car get some nice coffee and get ready and all you need is halal liquid of any kind I have coffee freshly made And joining me today for this unparalleled pleasure, dopamine hit of the week, is my son. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Alaikum salam. Who is almost 14. Yes, I'm almost 14. What are you drinking today with us? Apple juice. Apple juice. I put you apple juice because last time you were complaining that they died. <laughs> no more juice. No But more juice. Have... Join me, Dal, for this simultaneous sip in one, two, three. Bismillah. Nice. Alhamdulillah. That was very good. So welcome to episode two, season four. A bit of a break between these two episodes. Got a bit busy, but we are here. Mariam is not joining us today. She's busy with something. So oh, you know, busy. Always busy. No time for us. So how was your day today? I was just listening and watching a few videos on the crypto exchange that went down. Mm. And I listened to Kavizilla's video about it. Today on the way to school, we were listening a little bit of a um, podcast on artificial intelligence and you had some disagreement. What is artificial intelligence? No, right? a disagreement, but mainly like definition, I right. think so. So you were talking about what is your definition of artificial well, intelligence? I think my argument was there's a literal definition and there's my definition. Mm. So a literal definition is anything like as sim- even as simple as like, I don't know, the your feed on Facebook, like the algorithm, that is technically uh, artificial intelligence. But it's like, when you say artificial intelligence, when there's a headline, artificial intelligence is taking over the world, you don't think about Facebook, you think about some Robocop type stuff. What uh, my definition of artificial intelligence is, is like those cyber robots taking over the world and like these science fiction movies I actually think we're pretty close to that. I reckon that even some people already have these quote unquote killer robots that like have free will to make decisions of their own. On top of that artificial intelligence, there is synthetic biology or biotech. And technology? It's true technology, and you are looking at biology at a cellular or a DNA level as something that is programmable. Anyway, this was our quick intro. What I want to do to talk to you a little bit about is the history, as I witnessed it through my lifetime, of digital economy, finance, how I think these things evolve. All right. I remember as a kid, my first computer in the 80s was Commodore 64, as I keep telling you. We had games from soccer to basketball, and it was uh, loading games through the tape. And then later came cartridges kids would come to my house, we would play all day. And the major discovery was when we could play multiplayer game, like two people fighting. We also later got VHS, those players, so you could play some movies and stuff like that. Uh, I remember uh, we would gather in my uh, grandma's house. There was a movie that came out uh, called Message about the Prophet Wasallam. In those days, it was illegal to watch these kind of movies in Yugoslavia because, you know, Islamic, you know, something dangerous to watch. So we would secretly watch these movies. In the 80s, my father used to work for this engineering firm, Endergo Invest. So he would take me to his work. He was in, involved in automation. Automation is making things independent of people. Like, for instance, if you go today, Tesla cars, maybe 90% of it is made with robots and 5-10% is made only with the human touch. So my father was involved in that company in so I remember seeing in 80s first time PC at his place of work. They had a company called Iris. And later in my holidays, I would actually do my internship there. Iris was a special division where they made computers similar in terms of performance and everything like Apple and IBM. But in 80s, when I would go to see my father, it was so interesting. When I saw the first game on the PC, I was blown away. The first game I saw was Tetris. Oh my God, that was... I could have played it for days. Okay. Wow. <laughs> then K 
came 90s and we had a war in Bosnia. During the war, there was a fire in some of the buildings and uh, some hotels and so on. And I remember someone was selling computers in the market and they sold us one of these computers. So when we came home, we turned it on and it was from one of the hotels. So the computer <laughs> loaded and it was just like menu of the hotel. <laughs> And I remember I tried to learn the DOS operating system and I was like thinking, you know, oh, now I'm going to figure out how to break into records and, uh, you know, figure out what's happening. Like you, you're you thinking like, <laughs> like you are in a movie hacking into the system and so on. So it was very funny. Uh, at that time, also started to be interested more into the coding. In fact, even on the, on the Commodore 64, I would uh, use basic programming language to write simple commands, execute them. By the time war stopped in 95, I actually before that won scholarship as I won um, some competition in coding. And I came to Australia to study actually computer science, in science and engineering. I loved programming in C, C++, all of these languages that were used. After a couple of years studying, I changed my interest to more business and finance and went to that direction. Whatever was happening, in, uh, you know, 60s, 70s and 80s and then 90s, opened the door to some new possibilities. Things started to come together. There were computers which were quite powerful. You already had credit cards that you could use to pay online and you had internet to communicate. These are very important three ingredients of commerce. When we started developing payment methods, it was very simple credit cards, not like today. You would actually have to call the bank, confirm that there are funds. It could take quite a while to get the confirmation or you would uh, manually swipe the card with something and hope that they have enough money when you want to charge them. Uh, somewhere around 90s, we started uh, doing even online transactions. So when these businesses started realizing that there's something in the internet, a lot of companies try to benefit from the hype. Just like today in the crypto, there are firms that sell juice they put a blockchain into the name and the price of the shares goes up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are even vapes company, you know, these electronic yeah, cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just added uh, like crypto sounding name. They put some sort of thing. We are going to be something about Ethereum and Bitcoin and something. Mm. Immediately stock price jumped double, triple, 10 times. Board vapes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In 90s, what used to happen is that... Um, a similar thing. You would have tea company just adding a dot com into the name, and and, and people, uh, would people would buy shares. You would have companies that don't do even anything, but they would put in their uh, disclosure statement some kind of uh, www.internet.com www something something. <laughs> ten million <laughs> valuations would go ten times. Even during the nineteen uh, thirties. People uh, would do the same for airline industry because it was a big talk in town, airline, airline. So there was this rail, railway company, they put airline in the name and the share price jumped. <laughs> so it was crazy time. But look, you know, there was some people like um, Elon Musk, Bezos, that we talk about them today, who recognized that there will be some use in this technology. And Bezos had 20 ideas where this could work, selling stuff online. And uh, Elon Musk started X.com company, which later uh, with another company became PayPal. As this took off, you could see more internet native companies like PayPal starting, Amazon. Uh, Amazon. Suddenly you could have businesses from one part of the world sending goods to another part of the world. Interesting example is Alibaba company. What they successfully integrated was PayPal, Amazon and uh, eBay. They created a company that in essence connected manufacturers in China. Millions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's Million. a big marketplace, yeah? And you can huge, buy it huge. bulk for cheap. Yes. And so that basically connects millions of people, producers in China and now in a few other places in the world with hundreds of millions of customers around the world. I'd love to see something that does the same thing for halal. Uh, economy. And then when they started doing that, they even created their own apps like Alipay, where you could use 
the mobile app to make those payments and so on. This is some sort of evolution that I have seen in terms of my lifetime, watching those big clunky computers to now having ability to have your software services on cloud, sending invoices, reconciling that with your bank account and statements, reconciling what you send versus what you receive and then netting the difference, tracking huge amount of data that that we have around ourselves to make better decisions to the crypto world where we see uh, new ways of payments and new ways of thinking about money and so on. I guess with crypto, we will have a bit more discussion uh, to qualify and see what might be some of the issues. But this is what I have seen in my lifetime. Very interesting to see how far we, we came in 20, 30 years. And it shows the determination to be better as humans and be more efficient. Even now in the new, I think, iPhone update, you can literally tap another person's iPhone and send funds directly just mm. right there. Even we got so advanced that literally you can have locks on your house where you just tap your phone and then it unlocks it. Thank you, God, for these beautiful things that we enjoy. <laughs> That's so beautiful. So convenient. You know what? I always tell people, I want things to go in better direction, whatever is easiest. Even car, recognize you walking in, just starts opening the door, switching on whatever you needed to be switched. You can get a Tesla app. And like- yeah, Tesla is great. They, they, he, he's thinking forward. These things actually take time to come together. I remember when I was teaching at Latrobe University, I actually created first online professional development course. And I said, look, this model where you have only two semesters, it's not going to be sustainable. And you need to have more investments into this e-learning. Now, we all have a Zoom fatigue after the COVID, but complementing a brick and mortar business of university was idea to have 24 hours, seven days a week online world where you could expand around the world. And when I started on this project, university had a basic trouble from just accepting payments. There was no way to you for you to accept payments integrated into the student management system. Everything was disjointed, how to host the modules, how to play them, compatibility with different devices. It was crazy. When I started my own organization, you would have to have like 10 different services, private member website where people join, then payments, then what products you are buying, how you're running uh, online classes, how you're storing them, how you're sending emails, affiliate marketing links. And you had so many different products that you had to integrate and code. And, and so today when you see simple products where all of that is solved and you can just focus on running business, you know, even in terms of the reaching, how you used to advertise something back in my days is this. <laughs> you had to put a physical poster. poster. I used to tell you, you know, when as a kid, oh, yeah. we used to go to the cinema. There was this one place where every, uh, I think, Friday, it was like community town hall in Sarajevo. They would put a poster next to the minibus station. So when I would go home on Friday from school, I would always look forward which movie is playing. At the local, you know. Was it really cheap to go just? Yeah, it was, well, for that standard. You know, the cinema was just basically... Um, screen and seats. A screen and seats, you know, the wooden chairs. We arranged them on the half an hour before. <laughs> it was just a town hall. Usually halfway through the movie, tape would break or they, something would happen. There was no noise. There was no sound. Was, ah, but for us, that's the enjoyment. OG. OG, you know, the best. Interesting points. Interesting like. points, yeah. As the world uh, is going forward, your lifetime, inshallah, we'll see more and more this technology and biology and AIs, uh, data, creating different kinds of industry and um, competitiveness between businesses on a scale that is unprecedented from the way we produce medicine or food, uh, way we run business interact. Even some of these AI uh, robots, as you mentioned, that are used to be companions for people, uh, provide empathy like and things like that. that. Tesla one. Have you seen that? No. Elon Musk is making a quote unquote butler robot mm. and it's meant like I have no idea how he's going to do it. Like you said even before, 
you can tell a robot to do something, but you have to tell every single thing. Yeah. Walk two steps right and left. And he's trying to make a robot that does like tasks that are simple, but you don't want to do it, like the dishes or bringing the groceries. But imagine how hard you have to command. I have no idea how he's going to do it. It's also scary to think the world where you are alone looking at your devices for a pleasure, for stimulation, for connection. And then the only things in that life is another uh, robot that is providing you some kind of empathy. And that looks like a very lonely uh, world. We are driving that with the way we not interact with real people, but with the machines. We are surrounded with machines. The way we live alone and the way we are not taking care of those relationships and uh, the world around us, we might, might end up being living in those places where the only soft and nice word you hear are from the AI robot that is trying to comfort you. And then that metaverse or that virtual world is becoming so appealing to people. And then we create synthetic everything so the food is synthetic meat derived from the lab oh, yeah. the the comfort coming from the ai bot from the lab uh, even your organs uh, implants uh, <laughs> what, what are you becoming you are becoming terminator <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, that's what they want you to be. All right. We are becoming Terminators <laughs> or Frankenstein, as they say, yeah. you know, the concoction yeah. of all kinds of different body parts and mechanical parts. Like, I feel that some of it is, could actually benefit society. Like, the bots that, like, like that go in, go in your bloodstream and, like, fix Ted stuff, blood clots. I mean, that could be helpful. I think you make a really good point. The people who are in, involving themselves in this bioengineering and synthetic uh, creation of things and digitization of everything need to be people of ethics so that solutions that we get don't violate or cross some norms. A lesson that I feel is important is for the countries, first of all, they need to be at the cutting edge of this technology. They need to be there. They need to be involved. We need to have those capacities and understand what's happening so that whatever solutions are coming, we have better and more ethical solutions. Or we can also protect ourselves from the harm that might be coming from a digital age where you could synthetically make anything in a, in a little box at home, 3D printed and unleash on the world. Even more important for people to develop capacities our industries and our countries to strategically develop some ways of countering some of these challenges of the future that's all what we have time for you today thank you adam for joining me and i'll see you inshallah next time these episodes might not be every week might be every week or maybe a little bit more well, we're going a big project for you guys yeah just get ready yeah that's it until next time inshallah stay safe we'll see you soon assalamu alaikum